Today we are going to be talking about short lease flats and we have some amazing guests with us. So as always, we have Piotr Rusnik, we have Safe Dursey, but we have Charlie the Legend Parks and Rod the Absolute Legend Turner. And we're going to be talking about properties that are going to auction. Now, just as a little bit of housekeeping here, we've known Rod a little while. We did a deal with Rod. Best deal ever. The best deal ever that we bought from auction and within seven months sold at auction. Made a nice little profit on that. Would love to do that one again. And we um, stopped Rod from developing it. We we had to hold him back with the force of a thousand lines to stop him from, from building it out. But um, what maybe not many people know is that Rod used to buy and sell at auction um, uh, when you started out very, fairly early doors, right? So Yeah, I used to love auctions. Not because you get... Well, you did get good deals at the time, but it was uh, they were very different to how they are now. It's a lot, yeah. lot more kind of open to everyone, really. Um, mm. But yeah, it's, it's it's surety of getting a deal done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And then we have Charlie, who is part of the Buyers Club, full disclosure, yeah. and has done some phenomenal deals in your tenure with us. So we're going to be talking about a couple of those probably in a future episode. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, it is short lease flats, which is a bit of a rage topic at the moment with the change in legislation, the uh, Leasehold and Freehold Act that recently came out. So we have two dogs. I mean, we have two excellent properties to discuss today. Um, Piot, which one are we going to start off with? So let's start off with the one in Canning Town. So it's, uh, it's a two bedroom. Oh, Conningtown, Canningtown, Conningtown. Canning we'll get yes. there. We'll get there. <laughs> so this, this is this is a fantastic one, right? There's approximately fifty years left running on this one. It's yeah. uh, it's on. Is it the ground floor? It is the so ground floor. This is a ground floor flat. Yeah. Um, it's got a garden. It's got fifty one years left on the leash, and it's a two bedroom. However, you can see, like if you can see it once, you will. So we're doing forever. a lot of two bedroom in inverted air comments, right? So yeah. what we're saying with this one is essentially it's a one bed that used to have its dedicated kitchen area, its own room. But what it looks like is that someone's just gone in, taken the cupboards off the walls and then moved those cupboards into the living room and created... Well, first they put the liner on the floor. We can't forget the liner. <laughs> um, so they've made it look a facsimile to a kitchen, but... We have some questions about whether the sink is plugged in, whether there's any access to gas, if it is a gas kitchen, because that wall in that flat backs onto the bedroom. So where are they getting the services to uh, so facilitate you a kitchen? You talk about investors doing staging. This is where traders do staging. Right? <laughs> I guarantee you that kitchen and that liner is going to go into some storage space somewhere and be used for another flat at some point. But... <laughs> Look, I think from, from a trading point of view, they've done everything right. They've put into Auction House London, which is a great auction from a selling perspective. Mm. They've priced it very well. 100 grand guide is you know really, really good hook to bring people in to actually start reading the legal pack, engaging in viewings, having a look at it. I actually don't mind the fact that they've ripped the kitchen out and put it where the living room is. I think what they're showing is the potential of what can happen because clearly it needs a full renovation. Oh, yes. Um, and it's a proper refurb job. So for me, it has all the hallmarks of a really good trade in all honesty. And the fact that it's short lease is also another factor because some people might not factor it in in terms of how much the cost of the premium is going to be to extend. Some people might not even know that it's a short lease because they've not read the legal pack. Who knows? But I think all of this gives a really good hook from a trading point of view. But well, It creates price blindness, doesn't it? You have a price like that and all of a sudden you go blind to the things that you should be paying attention to. Um, Rod, what would you do if you saw this and you're thinking, right, short leases are an opportunity now. How do I make money from this? What would what would you do? Well, I think why a short lease is an opportunity. And I don't think the leasehold reform bill is a reason yet because it, it hasn't come out. It's, it's been passed, but it needs to go through a few other things. And I think there's a few misnomers about that that we should probably bring up. So I don't think it makes it cheaper for all flats to be um, to be extended. I think there's something in there where we haven't yet seen the detail, which is won't go into it now but it's capitalization rates yeah so for example something over an 80 year lease to extend may actually end up being more expensive yeah. for a leaseholder so 
there's a bit of detail there to come out, and I don't think that's then going to be done probably till till some point next year or it's, maybe it's even likely year to after. need secondary legislation, is what they're saying. Yes, yeah. so I think that in its own is not a reason to go hey short lease. So we're still really running by the old rules in terms of section forty twos and how many are in the block and really what it comes down to is control. How how much control will you be able to gain over this property? Um, from the freeholder and sometimes you can get very difficult freeholders and sometimes you can get very good yeah, freeholders. Yeah, that's the key thing to find out who the freeholder is on this property because if it's a private person, yeah. you're much more likely to get a deal done and um, you can, uh, like if I was a freeholder, I would be thinking like, okay, if this new legislation comes in, I'd rather take the 50K or 30k or 40k whatever it is because it's certain and it's here right now mm -hmm. instead of like hoping that legislation is going to work out the best way so but the section 42 is always going to be the fallback position because it's the statutory rights isn't it so yeah. i think if you work off that as a worst case scenario that's all you can work off today and work it backwards but don't go off the section 42 that's served in the legal pack actually try and do your own due diligence on what you think the section 42 will be based oh, on we've definitely yes. covered that in yeah. previous videos yeah. so we, we may even link uh, to those but and i'm yeah. actually quite impressed with auction house london of how they make a note for every uh, short lease property to say that the section 42 has been served and uh, there's a number on it but don't rely on this number because the freeholder may needs may to respond on the back of a complaint who knows uh, we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> so originally that note would just be to say a uh, section 42 note has been served check the legal pack and get legal. It'd be a very kind of planche kind Logic. of thing. But now it's it actually says, just so you're aware, um, to extend the lease, there will be an additional premium. So it's got like a whole little preamble before. Yeah. They're really taking um, the fun out of it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, it, but I think it just shows that everything has been open to like a retail market and those people need to be much more educated because yeah. in the past auctions were money for like actually people who know pretty much everything yeah. and all the risks were on the buyers. Right now, there's so much legislation that everyone needs to comply with. Tully, what's your thoughts I, on this? Yeah, I think I think when you when you look at a flat like this from a um from a, a buyer's perspective, it, and you're and you're not in the in the business and you're not you know you you are more of a retail buyer i think that, you, that obviously this comes with risks and it's it's guided at 100k was it 100 yeah so you're looking at a full refurb um you're looking at an end value of say 250 so um obviously you're not going to be able to get a comfortable two bed out of that so as a flip for a for a trader fantastic to give people the idea but it is only 40 square feet so it is only a one bed so you have to be kind of thinking you you need to really build in a really healthy profit on this. So this wouldn't be something that I would go for personally or I think is a, a is a good opportunity for a buyer, but great opportunity for a trader. But, but I think that's what traders are doing today. Mm. So what they're doing is they're trying to target um, or not trying to target specifically, but they're hoping that a buyer is going to miscalculate the, the refurb exactly. cost, miscalculate the Section 42 premium. Mm -hmm think that they're going to get a deal here. And in reality, the only person that wins is the trader. Yeah. What ends up happening is the actual investor slash developer is either going to end up at break even in terms of what the actual end value is. Easily or probably be on this one. Above what the market value is on it, yeah. it has to sit on it for a, for a long time. So yeah. that's the reality of these kinds of deals. Yeah. So what do we think the value would be if the lease was lengthened to? I think that's a done up. That's a 250k flood max. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say yeah. on a very, very good day, 275. Yeah. But 250 is probably conservative. So even if you factor in, this will not sell for less than 150 auction. It's impossible. Yeah. And if you factor in a... 30 to Ooh, 40 got a first guess already well, go. <laughs> he's got That's him strong i've laid my cards out on the table you know 40 yeah. square meters what are you thinking 30 40 grand refurb you know depending mm. on the spec and spec yeah. just really roughly i can't see a section 42 being less than 25 30k on this mm. can't see it being less than that so the reality is you've got probably about 80 to 90 grand's worth of cost including probably some finance as well stamp duty etc maybe 100 grand on a bad day. So if you're paying more than 150K already, you know, you're in the red mm. as soon as you've just bought it. So what um, will normally happen in these situations, you see it a lot on Facebook message groups and everywhere else where people moan and complain about a good deal or a bad deal that they've done or just auctions in general, is you'll find someone who is going to look at this and go, right, the only way I can make this work is if I do 
an unbelievable refurb and try and beat the 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 value for the road, the value for the pound per square foot in the area. And then it's kind of like a gambler doubling down on a bad debt, yeah. on, on a bad bet. They'll go from doing a 30, 40 grand refurb to doing an 80 grand refurb and remodeling the garden and doing all these fancy things. But is is the market there for that? And And people lose sight of that. When you're doubling down on a bad situation, it just gets you worse tell and worse. done a bad deal all the other classic yeah. is you know oh, we might have to end up holding this for another 10 20 years it's like well that's probably because you're not bought it very well but i mean the the in fairness the fallback provision for most investment especially um for uh real estate in the uk is that a cycle for a property for most people up until the last 20 odd years was to be holding properties for 20 plus years mm. It was, so the entry point wasn't an issue because the, the only exit was death, debt or divorce, right? Now it's, oh, I just want to refresh my portfolio. I want to get onto this. I'm moving out of this area and this asset into this area and this asset type of thing. So, But I think we're assuming that only an investor would buy this. And I don't think that's correct. No, I, yeah. the mm -hmm. chances are you're going to find it will be uh, an end user, owner, occupier, someone who wants a project. That's nothing new. Mm. Um, and they would probably... I'm going to go out here. They might even go for more than 150. Wow. So I I, 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 I think this, <laughs> this, this will, would I buy it? Absolutely not. Uh, and I love a short lease flat, but there's 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 too many limiting factors here to to, to trade the value because whoever's put this into auction house London, they're the only they're the only trader in this chain that will be making the is, money. Is there some um, any mileage do you think in someone else buying it, extending the lease, and then putting it back on the market? Without doing any work? They would need to be buying it at about 15, 20 grand below where it is now for that to work. Yeah. Mm. I think it's a tough one because ultimately what you're going to do is you're taking an auction product into an open market environment where actually you only really need an auction environment for that because you're going to be cash buyers only when you're mm -hmm. marketing it. Mm -hmm. Clearly it's not got a functioning kitchen. Clearly it needs a full refurb. And I actually think this is the kind of stuff that normally if it's going to open market, it normally has an arbitrage opportunity of buying no, I'm it. Saying, it I'm back saying it's sticking it back into auction, yeah. yeah. Once, you've, once you've got the um, yeah. lease extension. I think going mm. back into auction, you kind of then lose your... Because the, the lease extension alone, let's say, costs 30 grand, you then can't market it for as attractive of a guide price. Mm. But yeah. on that point, seeing as we've got you, what do you think it will sell for? Not what you would pay for it, but what do you think it will sell for? If you had to take a guess. I'm going to go... I'm already with Rod. <laughs> <laughs> whatever he's saying on, one I'm going to go with one four eight alright Charlie I I mean I wouldn't buy it I wouldn't buy it and it's it's I mean you'd have to do such a cost effective refurb on this so um, I wouldn't buy it but I think anything more than 140 I'd be uncomfortable with but what do you think it will sell for auction is it, that that's 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 the beauty of auction though isn't it that it, it, if you if you get a retail buyer that doesn't understand then they could be paying 170 for it so it's it's hard for me to say what what you i said think 170 it, charlie that's it <laughs> that's the, great answer charlie 170, 170. <laughs> okay yeah to i hope nobody pays 170 for 170. it 170 i think 162 um, personally 128 128 I'm not very, not yeah. very positive about I'm going to note one. that I've been pushed up from 140 I'm going to go. I'm going to go for 157 and a half. Okay, just wow. in between me and Just Rob in then. between, yeah. I, I think yeah. it's a safe, it's a safe cushion to be in. But yeah. I, I, I've got a gut feeling that if someone was to to buy this, not extend the lease, just do a really nice refurb, I think a retiree would move in there with 50 years left. They thinking they wouldn't have to extend the lease. Yeah, it'll, they'll probably yeah. be a cash buyer. They won't need to mortgage it and they will just live in it until, you know, they'll yeah. let the grandkids deal with the, whatever comes out the back of that. And I think I think if someone like that has that frame of mind or just looks a like that, I think that would that would be a good buy. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I think just with the short leases, if you're happy and the leases are long enough, like 50 years, if you're not wanting to make money, if you're not wanting to trade, then to be able to sit on it and wait and see how the legislation washes out is, you know... Especially if it's under 80 years, as Exactly. Because yeah. that's exactly. probably where the actual advantage is yeah. for... Yeah. But I also think, like, obviously we discuss short leases because it's a trendy topic and it's uh, yeah. a lot of people get excited about this. But some of the best deals are, like, similar to what you bought, like, 
no shit needs extension exactly. uh, required. So for me, I you would bought not... something that's just you just need to clear some rubble from the keep pipes. Keep it simple. Totally. Yeah. Keep it keep it simple. Um, and it's within your control. I think that's that's the important thing yeah. is to stick within things that actually are within your control. And then you have the speed, you have the certainty. It's down to your own skill set and your own ability of what you can make out of it rather than relying on on um, legislation that we don't know, mm. a freeholder that we don't know. And um, the only thing that's really attractive about it is a headline price that isn't real. So, yeah. Guys, this episode is sponsored by Roma Finance. If you need finance for your next property project or property purchase in the auction, make sure you complete the application form. The link is in the description and Roma Finance will help you finance your next property deal. Yeah, what's the second property then? So the second property is a vacant ground floor, two bedroom flat with private rear garden and a garage. And a garage. And a garage. Okay. And it looks rather strange because it's got like this fence going through the middle of the driveway and it looks like it's half of one house, half of another house. I don't know what it is, but it, it looks very strange. Uh, but I do think this is a proper two bed. But it does look like a proper too bad. And, and it's this... got 22 years unexpired on the lease. What do you think donut value is of this? Um, this one might be around 300k, actually. Mm. With, with a long that? lease and donut. Mm. Uh, it's guided 80k. Yeah. Do you know how many, um, how many uh, leaseholds are in the freehold? This looks like two. Okay. Like, it's like it's looks a house like, that's been split into two flats. Yeah, so but it, top floor, uh, ground floor. Well, top floor, but ground it's floor, not yeah. clear how it's been split. Mm, that's what. Yeah. That's because the, it, that's it kind the, of it for me. It, asking, it looks yeah. like it crosses the property line. So it may be actually there's a flat above and then a flat that goes around and then this one that comes in the front and then. But it's it it's a very interesting property because yeah it. It has more questions than answers. I mean, I don't think the full legal pack is out yet, which it's is not unusual. Yet, which is like the most uh, difficult thing because we can't say much about the property. It is, yeah, it is a 60A lot, though, just to throw yeah. that out there as well. It's an A yeah. lot. That, that's a very big, we've talked about this before, that's a very big indicator that a trade is taking place. Because it could be interesting to see what the rest of that building is made up of and also what the values are in terms of houses versus flats in the area. Because sometimes you find, especially in sort of in and around London, sometimes a house is worth more than mm. that that property yeah. split into mm. flats. So mm. depending on how the lots come out, it could be interesting to see if actually if there's an angle of putting yeah. it back into a family home. I mean, it's, well, en it's Enfield, so Enfield, yeah. that's a, that was a good point as well mm. because it's, you know... It's kind people of people will value houses around there as well. It's okay, part of Enfield, but not the. Because mm, I the, wonder if lot sixty, A, might even be the freehold, or sometimes you get it where the other flat is the freehold mm. as well, and there you could have a really great opportunity, either to then control the whole new lease extension or even put it back if the values dictate that. Yeah. So, so mm. one of the reasons I think I I picked this one was I. There was, we got very little information. It looks like, from the face of it, it's a rather perplexing opportunity. Mm. But we normally get really good comments on the YouTube channel of, of we got little investigators and detectives going out, and we had the same thing with the Wembley one where people really wanted to find out what happened. Um, and I think this is going to be a really good property for the community to go out and go, what actually is it that you would be buying here? I mean, we're going to follow up on this anyway. We're going to be, we've registered for the legal pack. We're going to be paying quite a bit of attention here. But this is a really good one for people to try and get their heads around what it is, what this opportunity is. And, and also, is. As, a, as a trader, you know, we like the shorter the lease, the better it is for us to trade because yeah. ultimately we can buy it for a cheaper price. Mm. But the perceived value is whether it's a 20 year lease or a 50 year lease, most of the time people don't really understand. The difference in the premium they're going to have to pay yeah so short lease is a short lease usually for the majority of people mm. um so and actually that's you, where we can probably get a better deal done do you guys want a little bit of a comparable yeah number yeah, 81 right. crest drive which is a lease called ground floor masonette three rooms garden vacant exactly the same exactly the same lease uh 1948 for 99 years sold for 142 two in, months ago in, in May and what what about the garage? What's where is that situated? Is that at the end of the garden then? 
the garage is we we actually don't know there's because no title there's plan no yeah. title plan because that would be interesting to see if there's some some sort of angle there as well. Well, that that's why it, it kind of took me a bit by surprise because usually a lot of traders will just split off the garage and sell it mm. as a mm. one pound guide lot, and it might make five, mm. ten, Probably fifteen five, grand. grand. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, the street history on the AG is pretty colourful. Um, the the the, the eighty one crest drive that I mentioned, it was actually purchased from purple purple bricks. Yeah a while ago and then thrown into Savills. Uh, there's a house that was um, unmodernized so it's, it's, uh, nine years ago for 308. Um, it's it's uh, it's pretty colorful history. I think it gives a lot of Enfield data. is an area where a lot of traders are active in as well because mm. it's that kind of affordable sub three, 400K type stock, which is what a lot of traders want. They want to do high volume, lower value rather than the opposite. So what questions do you want to find the answers to before you then go in and bid on this property? Title plan. Title yeah, plan title, to start, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. Title plan, floor plan. And, and freehold. Free yes. yeah. 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 But, but free also, holders. what's the demise of that lease as yeah. well? So we need to understand Not just the what does that include yeah. in terms of the demise yeah. of that lease. Yeah, because so. is, is, is the garage on a separate one? Mm. Um, yeah. d- how does, many leaseholds are within the freehold? Does it go yeah. over two properties, which then potentially creates a problem, or is it actually in one property, but just being split in a very peculiar way so yeah i think because we, you need to understand the full picture the the real effect of whether it's over two properties affects insurance it affects uh, the ground rent service mm-hmm. charge there's a lot of kind of little technicalities and intricacies in that where you think okay well the demise is here the lease is here the title so everything is normal but there's practical it, it elements would, it apply. would be very odd if it was over two different freeholds because that yeah, it i mean that would it. be an utter nightmare to create in the beginning um so I, i'd be really surprised if it is it, um, i think it just visually looks messy like that's yeah. what i was going to yeah. say i think the thing is it's visually once you i don't think a woman created the, that house the color block <laughs> And the fact that it has the fact that it's got the um, the fence going down the center, then yeah. I would expect but, but, that the that the that the title and the lease actually is is, don't forget, tra- is more trade, com- you've got it would give you more comfort. Traders buy problematic properties, so it mm. could be that this is some major fuck up somewhere. Mm. Mm. Traders don't solve problems; they just buy it and yeah. get the property get somewhere else. Unfortunately, yeah, they can they can they can price problems. They yeah. they don't. So I mean, Enfield is. Um, Previously, it was a really big kind of mining area, very, very close to London. So you find, actually, you get a lot of these kind of um, flying freehold elements that you get in other parts of the countries where other part of the country uh, where there are um, mining activities and other things like that. So I, I wouldn't be too grossly surprised if it was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Mm. Um, but I, th- I think there's, there's a lot going on with this lot that... Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, to summarize, uh, there's some good comparables. I think we pretty much know what this is going to sell for. It's probably going to sell for the same price as the previous yeah. property. Within 10%, within 10% yeah, up and it's down. It's got double bubble on it. I think it will go for double what it is now. Mm. Double of what? What's it on? Double of the guide. Is double it the, okay. Is it 80,000? Okay. Yeah, so 160. Yeah. Think think yeah, more or less. I think about yeah. 155 is about right, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. I think it will go for more than the one that sold in Savills. For two reasons. A, I think Auction House London is probably going to do a better job, personally. Yeah. Offensive Savills. <laughs> and uh, B, I think we're in a better time in the market now that things have settled down mm. compared to May as well. So I feel like people are a bit more positive, maybe paying a bit more for things as well. So, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bit more positivity that you can see in the auction results recently. Just to confirm, we're not sponsored by any. These are auctioneers, but others are available yeah, yeah. <laughs> until they decide to pay us loads of Charlie? money to sponsor them. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I'd say similar. It's I, I'd be, I, I don't 155 know. One five five or one sixty. No, 142. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one four five. One four five. I'm a bit torn by this one because we haven't really got much information to go on, so it is a bit kind of finger in the air stuff. Um, I'm gonna go one six three. Okay. Oh, wow. Bullshit. Oh. One six three and twenty pence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one five one. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay. Well, I think let's see how it's going to perform. I will re- release the results right after this section and we'll see who's right. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, those uh, shortlist flats are very interesting. Let us know, guys, what you think about it. Have you bought a shortlist flat? What did you do with it? Did it work out better or worse than you expected? Uh, put some comments below and see you in the next episode. Hey guys, so it's time to view the results of uh, both lots and uh, 
both lots actually sold in the auction and this one five crest drive in Enfield sold for £137,000 uh, so I think Charlie was the closest on this one um, it uh, did slightly worse than the other lot uh, that the Savills lot uh, which sold for 142 a few months ago uh, but um, yeah um, a fairly predictable result um, and uh, it did really well it almost doubled the guide price uh, which was 75k so this one sold done someone's going to do some great things with it and uh, this one 93 Carson Road it also sold 450,000 uh, which I think uh, the road was the closest he said 148 um, and um, this property uh, we expect someone will have to spend about 100k like 80 to 100k refurbishing it extending the lease and actually doing whatever needs to be done um, and it's going to be worth around 250 so it isn't really much money in it and uh, it sold really well considering the history of this property in the auctions uh, it basically sold post auction it was offered several times in Barnard Marcus auction um, it either sold or with, was withdrawn several times in the last uh, year or so and um, we'll see if this property will actually complete or whether it actually will be re-offered again in another auction so hope you found this episode of property auction hunters valuable make sure that uh, you watch some of our other videos and um, about short these slides about the leasehold and freehold reform act and also make sure you subscribe to our channel and uh, leave some comments under this video thanks guys see you in the next episode